What's up, everybody? It's uh, Richard here at the World Famous Gas Monkey Garage. And I'll tell you what, on Beer 30 right now, we have an amazing guest. One of my favorite fabricators that came through the shop. Just a freaking kick-ass guy. Lots of tattoos and lots of good stories. So watch this. That alien motor that they yeah, have, it's that. dual turbo everything. We're fixing to slap that in an OBS that is going to blow people's mind. And, I better be a part uh, of this OBS. Can you lock the door over there at Freeman and come over and help? I'll have to talk to the boss, but yeah. Really? All right, everybody. First things first, it is Beer 30, and uh, we have uh, one of the coolest guys that came through the shop oh, over hey, the thanks. years. Always had a great attitude, always just kicking ass and taking names, uh, and always in front of the camera. But uh, <laughs> this is Josh Freeman, and if you watch Fast and Loud for a big portion of all of our episodes, you know that he was uh, here. Uh, fabricating extraordinaire and getting after it, bending metal, welding, all kinds of stuff. He comes from a history of building cars and trucks and uh, what have you. Uh, unlike some of my people that I've had come through here that build like fences and stuff like that. This guy's actually like, hey, uh, <laughs> I knew that was that. <laughs> I knew that was that way. Have a cold beer, man. Hey, man this thank is, you. Uh, garage beer. And while we're on that, uh, Garage Beer, thank you very much for being the sponsor of this video. Uh, you know what? This is light beer for guys who like beer. No fancy crap, no juniper berries, no uh, we're healthy for you. We're freaking beer, okay? Go to your store, get some, drink it, enjoy it with your friends. It does have lime. There you go. I like that. Well, it's not a juniper berry, it's freaking Cheers, my lime. Friend. Cheers. And by the way, thanks for the introduction. Absolutely. And thanks for the beer. Well, and I have fixed fences before though, by the way. There you go. Uh, we're out of we're out of introduction, but we will never run out of beer. Fair so uh, what the hell's been going on, Josh? You're uh, sporting the Freeman sportswear yeah. here. This is actually just a work shirt. It's all I got right now at the moment. Just thought I'd wear it here and try to try to show Freeman fabrication on on your beautiful. Well, platform you sell here. those on your website, don't you? No, actually, I don't. What? I really just kind of concentrate Did lately. I've been just kind of concentrating on just crushing work. I just want to be able to give the best thing that I can give, best product to my customers. This is absolutely true, and I believe in that, yeah. but you gotta make money while you sleep. You gotta get these Freeman uh, fabrication shirts up on the old interwebs. Did I, I think, not teach you anything? You know, I think I need to start uh, taking some notes from you, I think. You start... should have started a long time ago, I man. know, fair enough, fair so, enough. So, uh, tell me, what's been up? What's been going on? I mean, it's been, what, about four years since you left, maybe? Has it been that long? Maybe three and a half? It's about three, three and a half, something yeah. like that. Yeah, it's been a long three and a half years. Uh, I've just been concentrating, like I said, I got three crazy kids that just take up all my time and and uh, I'm, I'm just trying to, like I said, grow the business. Let's grow the business. Putting out a good product, doing what I say I'm gonna do, doing it in a timely manner and it, just building some badass shit. It's really what I love to do. Wait a second. So you're you're like a fabrication shop, and you do all of those things. That would make you like like a unicorn. Yeah, that's not very often. I think it's like paint jail, fabrication jail, and interior jail. There's all those things that people talk about getting the car stuck there. I try not to be one of them because I know that people don't need to have their cars at my shop. They want to have their cars at my shop. So I like to see their faces when they come in, and I've. I've crushed what they've asked me to do, man. That's what that's well, the best no, part. Well, no, they do. I mean, I've tried to hire you back several times. You know, we had to go through a little rough patch, extricating ourselves from uh, the claws of the uh, of cable. Yeah, and that discovery. was a sad day, though, for me. I enjoyed the shit out of that. I did, but I was done. I, was I didn't have to end. deal with all the shit you had to deal with. No, you know you what I'm saying? You so, just had to come back just, here and, and do your job and do your I, stuff. I yeah. was up in the front, you know, getting beat up by lawyers and agents and managers yeah. and and contracts and and disco in general. So uh, it took a little while to uh, get that done and, and extricate. And now we're out here on the old YouTubes, the old interwebs, as I say. Yes. And uh, doing pretty good, I must say. Uh, yeah, I'm enjoying it. It's, it's awesome. It, I enjoy it's watching it. Fun. Yeah. You know, it's a little, you can tell, and I'll go back sometimes and watch one of the old Fast and Louds, especially towards the end. And you can tell I was yeah. just shot. You and were exhausted. On YouTube, it was exhausting. I'm having a little more fun, getting to do I it my it. way. I see you look happier. It's, yeah. The shop's awesome. Shop well, have great. you seen my wife? <laughs> hey, who hasn't, right? But uh, I honestly, the shop, a bunch of cool projects in here. I mean, we did get a little stagnant there for some time. We were making some weird things that they made us do. Obviously, made you get us. to what? They made us. Yes, they made they made us do. It was quite obvious too. You could see it. And and obviously, you walk in here now. So I don't know how much people know that aren't here, and how much you can show. But there's a lot of really cool projects in here, and that's fun to see. Well, it's um, you know back in the disco days. They kept shortening the time frame. Yeah. And I just thought, like yourself, well, you got to get the job done. Right. You, you got to do it. They, they said do it. You got this many days instead of this many days. Yeah. Or you got 
this instead of that. And and I was just like, well, okay, do it. Yeah. And at one point in time, we had you know demolition theater, uh, Misfit Garage, Garage Rehab, yep. and Fast and Loud. Yep. I'm doing all of those, and I just thought. You know, my dad told me, you know, if somebody gives you a Just job, you work. Keep pushing, yeah. And now I look back on it and I'm like, those guys were like beating me to death. Like Dude, hell, drum. they made us, we, we did the we did the 67 Firebird, we did the connectors, we did a full subframe, full motor. Yeah, we didn't build the motor, we got a crate engine. Well, it came but from I mean, um, the, the Pontiac guys. Yes, uh, uh, that's you, that's yes, you. Yes, I'm going to think of it in a minute. We'll think that's about you. it. Put it in the subtitles. Butler. Butler. Is that what you're saying? But yeah. Yes. Butler. It came from Butler. So, Sorry, Butler. You guys helped us out on that. It was awesome. And I just, you know, a lot going on in my brain. I couldn't figure it out. But hell of a motor. But, but dude, that, that 60, yeah, the car was badass. I mean, wheels, full plumbing, everything, interior, a brand new top, full paint. I did, I mean, I did two quarters on it and uh, mini tubs on it. We did that. And we did, what was that? Was it a Galaxy? Not a Galaxy. What was it? Uh, um, what was that brown car we talked about? The orange? Oh yeah, that was a Galaxy. It was kind of a copper was, orange color. Yeah, it was weird. We took the frame out, out from underneath that, put all new suspension on it, plumbing. We didn't rebuild the motor, we just refreshed it. Full paint and everything, stock interior, but it, like we did it in 14 days. We were That's crazy. building serious cars and yeah. we're still doing it. Just, you know, we've got a system here and, and I don't expect every shop to be able to do it. No, that was insane. Um, that was my favorite part about coming here is that you guys were so, cause I came in obviously towards the tail end. You guys ever had everything so lined out. It was so much fun. It, it was, uh, but it was also a lot of work. Uh, yeah. You guys put in the time and effort and, and uh, you know, made it happen. Everybody here was so proud of what we were doing. And, I, and that was what was cool. That's what yeah. made me work hard up there and keep it at bay. You know, I've, I've told the story before, but you know, the white line yeah. right there, yeah. you know, that's my, that's my, doesn't matter what's going on in the office or the lawyers or the agents or who's bitching about money or disco or cable or whatever. When I passed that white line, I had the microphone on, I had to do whatever I had to do to, to make the show. You guys got to stay on this side and just, you know, make the cars and, and, and Usually it was happen. come bitch at us, but you know. Yeah, but you know, it <laughs> really nah, it was wasn't. Good. It was honestly some of the best times. It's it's uh it's pretty crazy that we could screw off so much and still get so much done, to be honest with you. It I mean really we was. had a blast. Yeah. I mean there were I can't I mean even down to the simple T V stuff that people don't see like pushing a car out of the shop once, pushing it back in so they can get the other shop, put the camera guys inside and then watch us opening the door and pushing the car out, like having to do things twice. I Shit like they, that. I think they made us do a little more than than you have to do now. I mean, yeah. obviously now we still have camera crew and we still have things, but the technology is so much smaller, it's yeah. so much sure. easier and you can set up a GoPro and you can do it all in one thing and yep. people don't care if you're wearing a microphone or there's a camera. Different time, different time like you say. You know, and back they then it was like, yeah, we to get one shot, like yeah. you're saying, coming out of that garage yep. door was three or four times. It was, and, and it it's crazy. You wonder how, how we could ever get anything done, but somehow we did. But you know what though, that made for good TV too. You it never did. saw a camera guy. You always, you know, it, it really kept you in the show. I mean, I, I enjoyed the hell out of it, man. Well, you, yeah. I will never go back to that. I like what we're doing here now. I, and, it uh, looks like a lot more fun around here, to be honest with you. It is. Did yeah. you see the Izetta thing we're building I, with a 350 in it? I did. And uh, we got a truck back there we're fixing to get started on. What did you think of the skid mark? We just finished that up. So I didn't get a chance to go to SEMA this year. I was yeah. busy back at my shop, you know, Freeman Fabrication. Eh, whatever. Oh, there's my camera. Is it FreemanFabrication.com? Yes, it is. Go there now. He's going to have shirts up by next week, I promise. Oh, yeah. Anyway, um... Uh, yes, I did get to see Skidmark. Outstanding build. I didn't get to see it at SEMA, unfortunately. Um, it looks like uh, it's got all the bells and whistles, man. I mean, first thing, first time I've ever seen billet door hinges on a C10, which maybe that just I've ever been paying. I, I'm sure, obviously, you know. they're bitching. I had never noticed them before. I've never paid attention to them for whatever reason, and they, I keep looking that direction because it's over there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> beautiful truck, beautiful truck. I'm blown away with it. Uh, the fit and finish is awesome. Uh, I mean, especially for your time frame and building the te Tesla, the Testa, Testa at the same time. Unreal. I can't believe and, you guys. And we did the 812 super fast, and then we did a kind of a bolt arm project with the TRX for oh, that's right. uh, an Overlander. That's right. But, but uh, still, man, to get that all done with the crew you had, impressive. Yeah, I, I'm real impressed with the guys. I'm real impressed with uh, Skidmark. Can you believe I'm giving that damn thing away? I, I think it's silly. I think you should keep it. I really truck. would, but you know, I've always said since the beginning of Gas Monkey, uh, this is our 20 year anniversary. I always said I'm, I'm in the business of buying and selling, not buying sure. and keeping. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You'd have all the cars. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, you do have all the cars. There's a whole nother, I don't know how many, 20,000 square foot over there of just cars. Who so, knows? Who knows? Yeah, but, but I'm I, always trading. I'm always buying and selling. And you know, guys and gals come up to me all the time. And even little kids like, 
what's your favorite car? And I'm like, the one that made the most money. Facts. <laughs> I, uh, hey, you know, I get that. Uh, I mean, I've got, a, I've got a truck that I'm holding on to. It's a C10 as well, but it's a little yeah, older. Yeah, that's, uh, you call it shark something. Yeah. Hammerhead. 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 Hammerhead, yes. Yeah, that's a that's, badass truck. I remember you. you, we probably got video of you coming in here and doing burnouts. That's a funny story, actually. Oh, yeah? So, so we went to, a um, uh, couple of guys ended up with Crew Cut. Remember when you had Crew Cut? Yep. We went to Texas uh, Motor Speedway for laps for charity. You could pay 20, 30 bucks or give 100 bucks and do a bunch of laps. So I, I, I caught myself way in the back so I could hang way back. Me and the wife are in Hammerhead. So if you hang back, you could really get up to speed and drop in and you know take take the track like you want and not just sit behind the pace car and putter, yeah, exactly. putter, That's and putter around. Yeah, it's fucking dumb. So anyway, I got at the tail end of it so I could do that. So we'd run a bunch of laps, do some burnouts in there and bail out, right? Cause you're not supposed to do any burnouts. So I did a donut real quick and then bailed out, you know, for the gram, did that kind of shit. Yeah. And uh, drove all the way home. We live about an hour from Texas Motor Speedway. The next day I'm driving into work, which is here. And uh, I come up on a Holden. Him and me and a Holden are just ripping through traffic, you know, 90, 100, just kind of just ripping through traffic, having fun. You know, one of the, hey, later when we both get off the freeway and, and came here and it was actually donuts. It was National Donut Day. So I pulled right into the lot and Sinjin's all, hey, can rip it do up, some donuts. Dude. Yeah, do some donuts. So I came in, I'm doing some donuts. And uh, as I'm done doing the donuts, I was fucking hanging it all the way around the outside. I mean, tight ones, fucking killing it, having a blast my favorite part about here just come in and do a donut at your at your place Why of employment not? that's what it's here for. pretty badass so anyway as i'm as i'm finishing out the last donut and about to pull straight into my parking spot the lower control arm fuck, the bolt had backed its way off and dropped to the ground oh, the lower control arm bolt where, where the cotter pin went i have no idea but i can't believe after all that i did my wife and i are in the car on texas motor speedway i drive to work at 100 miles an hour do donuts in the parking lot and as i'm stopping to park it the fucking control arm drops out of that thing blew my mind i got super lucky all i had he to do did. is that could have done a little was, damage yeah oh, it's pretty nuts so that was that was uh the first time i had an issue with it I've said, well don't ever sell it i mean it's no like, it's it's a keeper it's like uh the 52 fleet line you know i bought and sold that truck all through uh the first seven ten years of of, of gas monkey we it was the first car that we built as gas monkey garage and um every time i needed money i sold it and every time i had money i bought it back <laughs> And uh, so we finally bought it back, I don't know, somewhere around 2014 or 15, and we got it back here. And we just recently, um, maybe two years ago, put a real motor in it and got it back up on uh, all of its uh, four legs. And uh, I'll never sell that car. Uh, you know, it's just uh, something that's it's the first car we ever built. Check it out. Uh, I've still, so we got the first car we ever built yep. as, a, as a shop. Yeah, I got I the first so. car we ever built uh, on television, uh, and I still got the Mustang. And uh, those three pretty much aren't going anywhere anytime. Yeah, ever. but that's different. That's not a buyer yeah. seller. Those are those are some landmarks or however you want to say it that you got to keep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always tell my wife, you know, when you kick me out and I'm sleeping under the bridge, I'll have a very kick-ass section of cars and my green motorcycle sitting there. Get the yellow paint out. Make yourself some stripes, some parking yeah. spots. Tie yourself in. Yeah, I think you can nowadays with the I, homeless I've situation seen it. the way I've seen that it. it is. I you think can you can steal just... from construction sites, build up, build, build a little up. Taj Mahal, and live yeah. in it. Yeah, you know, get some pallets, put some plywood on it. Next yeah. thing you know. You got yeah. a three bedroom condo you, under a bridge. You'd never be homeless. That's right. Rent free. Hey, that's not a bad idea, actually. So uh, not bad at all. So tell me about um, the working environment here. And uh, I'm not trying to get you to talk shit on anybody you unless you want to. No, 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 no. Uh, I'm not going to. But, uh, you know, how was it in general as far as because there's a lot of pressure. Sure. Uh, a lot of pressure that I so the working environment here was pretty, pretty uh, tough at first because I was coming in here. I did come from the the other side of the fence, the other side of the tracks. It's called California. Oh, no, 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 I mean before that even. Uh, I, once I got to Texas, I came here after working somewhere else first. And uh, so everyone's like, whoa, what's this guy doing here? Why, why is he here? And then there were some people that were like, He's way too cool. He's got tattoos and looks good. No, and no, no, no. definitely not that. Bad that could have been that could have been the case. I'm not sure. I, I would never guess that. <laughs> but, but no, I think it was like they there was a little bit of apprehension. Like, why is this guy here? Like, there's there's already a fabricator. There's already a this. There's already a that. And, and like, why is he here? And so uh, there was a little bit of tension at first when I first got here. Just kind of kept my nose down. I was super grateful to be here. It was really trippy to walk in here and be on TV, considering I watched this show for what, six, seven years before I got here, right? About how many years were you on TV? I don't know how, uh, we, since 2012. Yeah, so I mean, I kind of, in a way, grew up watching this show. When TV shows popped off, I, I'd, I'd watch this on TV, and so to be here and be actually working here was pretty surreal. So I just kind of kept my nose down, kept quiet, 
got the brunt of some jokes, you know what I mean? Got beat up a little bit, but then uh, it all kind of came full circle when we did the, the Mustang and it first aired when we did the Steve McQueen Mustang. Oh yeah. And I got some good camera time on that episode. That was a It was pretty good. good. It so was it was fun. a good little dig back at everybody that gave me shit for, for trying to jump in on scenes, which I was just doing what I was told. There was a lot of that where people, the, 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 uh, the way it was around here is be on camera as much as possible so that the that when the when the episode aired you would be the guy on TV there was a lot of that going on i can't think of the word right now but you know you, you really felt yeah there was competition there too to be on camera and so people would jump in on scenes and you know the the guys would tell you what to do and you're just doing what this there was some of that going on there was, there was it a little was stupid bit of that. it was really dumb i was just grateful to be here honestly cuz like i said i i didn't i didn't expect to be here and it was super just i happened to stop by one day and was standing at the gate and i saw jason J, J, jason Aker walked out and he said hey how's it going and just like he always does you know and like you do you go up and say hi to the guys at the gate yeah and come uh, to the gate. yeah come to the gate say Bring what's beer. up and You'll have a better outcome. who knows you might get a job i mean that's what i did i walked up to the gate i was one of the guys hanging on the oh, hand, shit don't say that edit hey no don't edit that that's the good part <laughs> i was just hanging on the chain link fence and and just kind of by myself i mean amongst a bunch of people and uh Jason Aker said hi, and I said, hey, you know, just kind of introduce myself. And he's like, hey, you want to come in and check it out? And introduced me to Mike, and I kind of walked around, and honestly, I think two days later, I was eating lunch at, at uh, world-famous Whataburger. And uh, Whataburger, you know, if you want to sponsor this, that's cool, too. Like, I love yeah, Whataburger. Like Water Sweet Burger. and spicy bacon burger combo. Dude, forget about it. But anyway, uh, I got a call from you. Yeah. I left my number with Mike Coy, and I got a call from you, and fucking... The rest is history. I got to. Well, I wasn't sure Wolf if it was a number that Mike Coy found on the path of the wall. <laughs> and I was getting set up or something. You probably called three numbers before you got my number, and two of, <laughs> two of which were from the bathroom wall, I'm sure, with Mike. But no, it was, it was a good crew, uh, you know, and I had some problems back here back then. Uh, sure. You know, and, 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 you know, we've always taken the stance of not bad mouthing anybody or anything. No, definitely not. I have nothing bad to say about it. We had some freaking problems back here. And uh, you coming in kind of made everybody start paying attention again. Sure, you know, sure. And uh, what have you, and going, okay, wait a second. This isn't as cushy and easy as I think it's gonna be. I better do my job. Yeah, when I came in, there was some, uh, there was some changes happening. You know what yeah. I mean? There was some, there was some uh, people that were getting let go and some other people that were coming in. And, uh, you know, it definitely, it definitely, you could feel it in the well, shop. Well, it never ceases to amaze me. You know, people that probably have never owned a shop or owned a business of their own, they get on the old their uh, keyboard and they start whipping it going, oh yeah, you can't keep people around because you're a bad manager or you're a bad boss or you're this, you know, and all that. And I'm like, it's a fucking shop. Yeah. You know, you got a lot of uh, 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 testosterone in here. You got a lot of ego. Oh yeah. You got a lot of, I'm better than you. You got a lot of guys yeah. jockeying for positions. And, and then you got also, you know, like anybody else in anywhere else, I don't care where you work, there's always those people that just suck, period but they're filling a void and yep. you gotta deal with it for a minute until you find somebody that's better to fill the void. And, and uh, then add cameras to that? Yeah, Ooh. and then add cameras. So yeah, now it gets ego, spicy real quick. Everything goes way up. Yeah. And we had to fight real hard not to show the bullshit because there is bullshit. Sure, you could and run I, down that path for sure. I, I, you know. I told Disco from the yeah. very beginning and, and it's actually one thing that me and Aaron agreed on in the very beginning, we will not fight in the shop I, or bitch we're it's gonna, gonna be spat sure but you're gonna throw bolts gonna and make kick boxes shit and and whatever but we're not gonna do that shit yeah. just to make uh television i said it's the second that we as a shop look like uh well, call it out, Orange County, you know. Sure. They took that fighting too far. I mean, I think they were their brand. dysfunctional initially, you know, the 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 son and father. I mean, it was tough. Who cares? I know, but they keep just that pushed off it. it too far. Yeah, I agree. A little bit here and there. I never watched it for that anyway. You, know? you always wanted to watch it for what they were building. Yeah, and that's absolutely. the reason I watched the show. I was always looking in the background at the Bailey tools, second checking out, see what see what what's going on, how do they do things? Because I was a fabricator, I had my own shop at the time when I was watching the show, and obviously before I had my own shop, I was watching the show. And it was always, what could I see? How were you guys building it? What were you making? You know, that was the stuff that, because the internet was fresh, you know what I mean? There wasn't a lot of, a ton of content as far as how people were making things. So you got to and, see it on this show. And, and that's what I liked about it. it was brutal too, it, you yeah. know, because back then, if, it, if they said it on the internet, it was gospel. Sure, you know? that's, a, that's a whole and, other thing. And now we've gotten to where the point is, it's almost totally opposite. If they say it on the internet, you better fact check that shit. Yeah, it's probably not true if they say it. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> yeah. It's probably not, or yeah. it's exaggerated. And now it's like this navigational tool that we have to use to even get through the old interwebs. Yep. You know, you're just like, man, I don't know what to believe. They could tell me right now that it's sunny in Dallas and I'd have to go outside and look. 
For sure. Well, that's Dallas. It can change in five minutes anyway. So. That's true. If you don't like the weather in Texas, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's the saying. Kick so this beer's ass. good, dude. Well, man, I appreciate that. You know, I, I took a little equity position in it. I'm, I'm uh, pushing it hard. We're fixing to be in Texas. Uh, we're fixing to launch in uh, Nashville and uh, all of Tennessee. We're Great looking name. At, we're looking at putting a gas monkey bar and grill uh, right there on Broadway in Tennessee. And uh, awesome. that would be cool. I'm, I'm a fan. I'll eat it. I'll eat it and drink it. Well, I don't, I don't know if you eat beer or not. I, not light beer. Some of that. those stupid big heavy beers. It feels yeah, like no, it feels good. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, exactly. All right, so you're fabricator extraordinaire at Freeman Fabrication. Sure. Um, I just got back from Barrett. Uh, did yeah, you, you see did. the Hummer? Did, did, who didn't see the Hummer? I know, right? That was, so, that was a good thing. So those guys missed SEMA. They were just shy of making it to SEMA to show it yeah, off. Yeah, that would have been. So they brought it here. I think it played it well, though. Me. I think it played well. I, I know. They played know. it right. And uh, they showed it off to me, and it was uh, Danton Arts Customs and uh, Frenchie Exports. They did a phenomenal job building it. And I said, guys, I said, Maybe there's a little partnership here to have. I've been selling cars at Barrett Jackson for a very long time. Maybe I can pull some strings, leave it here with me, and let's see what happens. And uh, I was able to get it on prime time Saturday night. And uh, you know, did all well. I did was rep the car. It uh, did we well. We didn't build it. You know, they did, and it did well. Yeah, you know, I had a lot of people asking me about it because as everyone that I know knows that I worked here and knows that I know you and they wanted some insight on it. You know, there wasn't, they didn't know 100%. Did, did Gas Monkey build it? I saw it was at Gas Monkey. What was going on? I'm like, no, man, I think he he just had an opportunity to have the have the truck at the shop and come to find out that was the case and you got a chance to sell it at Barrett. And I mean, holy crap, did that thing go crazy. I mean, the internet really? blew up watching that thing. I, I mean, I watched all about it. Then what I did is I went to their Instagram page and I checked out the build. I love the styling of it. Some of that stuff to me is just blown up and ridiculous. I mean, trash work. Dude, this thing's super cool. I love the, the big front splitter in the front. I mean, honestly, and it wasn't like um, indie car-ish looking to where it didn't fit the build. No, it looked like almost like a F1 Hummer piece would, would be made. You know what no, I mean? It looks he's, super he's, cool. He's got a good eye on him. Sure and, does. Uh, I've gotten to know him. Uh, and, and we're talking about building something else as a, as a joint venture in the oh, cool. future, but I'll, I'll hold that under the hat. I want to know what that but, is. But, uh, so we saw the Hummer sold for 830 grand with the juice at uh, Barrett Jackson. And, uh, that's, that's pretty unbelievable. It's a testament to what those guys built and, uh, maybe a little bit of gas monkey. Yeah, marketing. I would think so. The exposure didn't hurt anything. <laughs> yeah, that was true. Yeah. So what asked. about the trends? I mean, do you see the K5s? Dude, K5s, you know what I've seen? You know, you always get stuck in the, the don't go down the rabbit hole of the of the bad side of Barrett as well, where you see a K5 that is selling for $330,000, but it's got spray can undercoat underneath it. But holy crap. Oh, no, that was that, that was that C10. I know oh, it was what a C10? you're talking about. Okay, okay. I'm just, talking about Blazers, but dude, yeah, the Blazers C10, are out of control right now. That one that brought 330, I don't know, man. Uh, I, hey, there's a lot of those cars. I think a lot of things get blown up there. There's a lot of people drinking. I don't know if you know anything about that, ever, ever being at an auction overbidding on something uh, i've never been in an auction okay. sober well that's neither here nor there but people people definitely do that i've heard stories but uh but yeah uh there's been there's been some pretty badass k5 blazers out there that i mean so i gotta ask you then what is the difference between a two hundred thousand dollar k5 blazer and a five hundred thousand dollar k5 blazer i think honestly it's it's a for me it's the look. It's the feeling you get when you look at it. Sometimes if it just hits a guy with the right blue and white combo or it's the right wheel and tire package, I, I honestly think right now a lifted K5 Blazer with with four by, with all the right axles, with all the cool guy parts, a, a Roadster Shop chassis, something like that underneath it, I mean, you can't go wrong. It's kind of just a good formula. If you can get a good chassis underneath it, get the right the right motor in it, the right interior in it, you know, do the throwback interior with some plaid in it or whatever and get the right color on it, man. And obviously, it was proofs in the pudding. It was it was pretty crazy. The, the this, C10s were killing it. The yeah. K5s were killing it. Um, They've been killing it for a while now. Like the C10s, it's been pretty nuts. Any truck, yeah. I any mean, truck. they're rolling across trucks. It's just bananas. And uh, and then you got into there were very few big million dollar cars this year. There was only sure. like eight Donald's, or nine. Donald's Trump. Donald Trump's. Yeah, uh, I think the top ten cars ended with Donald Trump's yep. uh, at a million flat. Yep. yep. So only ten cars brought a million bucks. Yeah, you know, I think honestly that feels like the trend is is not those big. The guys aren't going there for the big million dollar, you know, the Lamborghini Mirrors, which is our favorite car. You Absolutely. know, a hundred percent. You know, all those big type of cars. Like obviously Donald Donald Trump's uh, Lamborghini hits, but I think it's the it's that three hundred range, that three to four hundred range. To five. They told me that they had more three to five hundred thousand uh, dollar cars submitted than they've ever had submitted. Unreal. 
And, and Barrett's very picky. They're not going to put a car out there that the owner goes, oh, it's worth 300 grand, unless their board, their, their people believe it's worth 300. Sure. Sure. You know, you're not going to just get in with a stated value or something like that. You got to, you know, everybody's got to go, you know what? It's probably a $300,000 yeah. car. And, you know, honestly, three to $400,000 cars are way cooler than the million cars, that, million dollar cars a lot of the times for me. Sometimes. Yeah, sure. You see a, a, a Ferrari Dino or something. Yeah, it's worth a million bucks and it's badass. Honestly, you, you love it. It's beautiful. I'd still rather see a K5 with uh, with an LSA in it or something. You know, yeah, bring in five fifty. Yeah, dude. I mean, I'm not buying them. I can't afford that. I know. I like never to build them I, and sell them. I, exactly. I never thought I'd go to Barrett Jackson and go. I can't even afford a Blazer. And that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. I can't it even is, do that. It is out of control. But obviously, there's plenty of people out there that can. Jeez, man. You should start building Blazers. I should, but I'm. You know what? We never build the same thing twice. That's facts. Awesome to see you. Awesome to have you here. Likewise. But let's go on a little bit of a of a fast round. Okay. What are you doing this year? It's 2024. What do you got going on? What do you see trending? What do you see happening? I've been on the, the wide body kick for five, six years now trying to build a bunch of cool cars. I might have a Mustang in the works that uh, is a wide body style, as low as possible, kind of that pro touring. I don't want to say that because that's been burnt out, but like a, a cool race car inspired daily driver slash track car that's what i see really i've been seeing that for years you know when i had my now, is this OBS old here. mustang or new old mustang fastback okay. you know you know 69 ish whatever right okay awesome. and so I, I that's that's a, a build that i'm working on with a guy i'm trying to trying to just really lock everything down uh, like i said road shop i mentioned it already once but they have a chassis now for it there's a, another company that does as well and uh i just i i really feel that that's the trend is that is that racing inspired, old school vintage racing, but with all the modern amenities kind of thing. I kind of like, like we were doing with the Rivy. Uh, that, that, that idea, that, that direction. Damn it. Edit, okay. You like, had to mention okay. the Rivy. Do you know how many emails I'm gonna get now about Sorry. who's, well, when just we're gonna don't finish show the Rivy? Don't show it, let's start over. Uh, no, I'm just kidding, okay, we can okay. talk about it. Okay. The Rivy's never getting finished. Yeah, the, the Rivy's a great parts car, by the way. You should yes. pull the parts oh, from the Rivy. I'm pulling the parts. There's some really I cool got parts some ideas. in the Rivy. So, uh, so anyway, that, that race car inspired, you know, luxury slash, you know, the thing we talked about for five years now, Absolutely. same with my OBS, same thing, a, like a track car that you can drive daily with static, with some coilovers and 20 by 12s or 18 by 12s all the way around. I really feel that that's coming. It already kind of started something you and I just, we, we loved five, six years ago already. It's going to start crushing. That's going to be definitely so. the trend. They're going to bring that, you're going to bring that rocket bunny slash wide body look to american style cars that's absolutely uh, that's my but i was ahead of rocket bunny when i built the 68 mustang see this is what i'm so far ahead so far ahead bro i mean yeah. that's gas monkey right there but i'll tell you what i think is uh the the motor and and the plug and play technology is coming along so much that now you're you're styling the vehicles you're doing the wide bodies or yes. or small tire stuff or whatever yeah you know we're we've got a plan we're going to do with the frenchies uh, and I can't let the cat out of the bag yet, but well, better it tell is, me off camera, yeah. It is. Oh yeah, I'll okay. tell you off camera. Okay. But it is absolutely sick. We've already got the drawings done. Uh, we've got uh, this Ford back here. We're building, and while it is still a standard, uh, you know, short bed Ford, uh, we're kind of putting a different spin on it. It's very, very race inspired. I love that. And then uh, we are uh, going to be partnering up with uh, Nelson Racing, and uh, you know that can't alien, there. that alien motor that they yeah, have, dude, I love that's that. dual uh, turbo, everything, uh, like turbos. 1600 horsepower or something. We're fixing to slap that in an OBS that is going to blow people's mind. And, I better be a part uh, of this OBS. Well, that's what I mean. So you know, if I need some help from time to time, can you lock the door over there at Freeman and come over and help? I'll have to talk to the boss, but yeah. Is that your wife? Well, that's both of us, but me. Yeah, I'll talk oh, to him. I'll okay. talk to so him So you're in charge? Uh, yes. Really? Yes. <laughs> no, it's a 50-50 it's a, it's a business, and we are doing just Yeah, and both yeah. sides are her decision. <laughs> no. Hey, man, why are you going to blow me up on camera like this, dude? Come on. I'm not I'm trying to. This I'm just telling beer. you. I'm just telling you. I've been around you for a while. I know who runs, runs the roost. Yes, and that's okay. She's a, she's a wonderful woman. So she is. She's awesome. Yeah, she's awesome. She's awesome. And uh, you guys are a great fit. I, I always loved having you guys over when we had big parties and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, back to, your, back to your crazy builds. Is that what you're thinking? Getting we, weird? We got some cool stuff. Yeah, Love it. We got, a, we got some really cool stuff lined out. We got a lot of fun happening. Uh, we've got some different uh, episode things that are coming out on YouTube. Pissing off the D is already working so good. I buy stuff just to piss her off. I love it. And uh, if, if, if I can make enough money doing it, I want to buy our childhood home and put it back to the way it was and make her spend the night there because she hates that place. And awesome. uh, 
and Weird what have awesome. you. Yeah, I know. It's it's just too much. I've got a lot of plans for that. We'll uh, kick ass. Uh, Josh Freeman, uh, Beer 30, uh, Freeman Fabrication. I have got to tell you, and I tell everybody this, I am never more proud than when people have come through the shop and they've gone on to make their own world and make their own business and, and, and proliferate and do well and provide for their family and build uh, brand awareness and everything else like that. So if there's anything that uh, I did to help that, you I, did, absolutely. I, uh, I am very proud of that. Well, and, I appreciate uh, it. You know, what have you. Uh, guys, Josh Freeman, he will have these shirts up soon enough, I promise you, because or better I will ones. make him do it. Uh, you got to make money while you sleep, brother. Fair enough. I appreciate it. Put Good the back to see call you. out whenever you need help on anything. I'm always here for you, man. Yeah, put the big F yeah. in the sky. I'll, I'll come running. <laughs> I love it. Thanks, my man. I appreciate your time. Woo!